Hello everyone, my name is Jayatma Vikramanayake and I am the United Nations Secretary General's Envoy on Youth. It is my great pleasure to be part of the inaugural Nala Fem Summit and to share the stage with so many skilled friends and colleagues from across the continent. First, I want to thank the Nala Council for the invitation and I congratulate you on the first year of fostering, enabling and mobilizing women and girls from Africa and the diaspora for the full realization of their human rights. Women constitute about half of the global population. But to achieve a gender equal future, we must recognize that this number does not represent a homogeneous mass of people. Our age, gender identity and sexual orientation, disability, race, class or ethnicity are all factors that shape our lived realities, our opportunities to thrive and to realize our human rights. In addition, it matters a great deal where we come from. We know that women and girls in humanitarian and crisis affected contexts face increased violence, risks and barriers to access basic services such as healthcare and education as well as a lack of opportunities for political participation. On top of all this, the COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated these challenges and that disproportionately faced by adolescents and young women. Clearly, we are seeing setbacks and even pushbacks against progress on the ground, despite consensus among governments on the importance of the issue as seen during the Generation Equality Forum, for example. To me, the reason is simple. Gender equality is fundamentally a question of power. Most stakeholders agree that young people are a force to be reckoned with, yet struggle to co-create processes they take they take part in and are expected to influence. Throughout the past years, I have interacted with many young feminist leaders who have been frustrated about the lack of transformative change and challenging power dynamics. I know very well that young people face discrimination due to patriarchal power dynamics and ageist practices. They deal with top-down methodologies, unclear decision-making processes, disregard of their opinions due to their age, lack of resources and overall burnout. Fighting for a more equal future is exhausting. But young feminists like yourselves persistently lead action on the ground, demand accountability and push for social justice. Let there be no doubt that to me and to the United Nations, achieving gender equality is a non-negotiable objective. The Secretary General's report on our common agenda has set out a vision for the future of the multilateral system and global decision making in which women and girls are at the centre of commitments. And there is a specific recommendation to elevate young women's voices at all UN processes. We are committed to make this a reality and our blueprint to do this is the UN's first ever system-wide youth strategy, Youth 2030, which guides our work with and for young people. The strategy is a human rights based, gender transformative, gender sensitive and gender responsive approach to ensure that all young people in all their diversity are enabled to participate meaningfully and influence decisions that affect their lives. Let me end by highlighting two key points that I think are central for this to happen. First, to leave no one behind, we must embrace intersectionality. Intersectionality as a tool for transformative action that should inform our feminist practice. An intersectional approach allows us to understand not only the compounded barriers that young women and girls face, but their potentials and their contributions as well. To be able to do so, age and gender desegregated data is fundamental. Second, decision makers must be accountable and institutionalize co-leadership models to a higher degree. The Generation Equality Forum recognized that the pace of progress is too slow in policymaking, legislation and governance. 
As we strive to be more inclusive and equal, we must implement actions that push beyond tokenism and towards young feminist leadership and strengthened intergenerational collaboration. With that, let me wish you a successful summit, which I am sure will contribute to further strengthening African feminist thinking and doing. I look forward to working together in support of co-leadership, co-ownership and co-creation as the pathways for granting decision-making agenda and setting power to young women and girls in Africa and all over the world. Thank you.